Hi guys, Trev here with another episode of Mac in 10 or less. Alright, today I'm going to be reviewing an app that I just downloaded from the App Store a couple days ago and I've been really liking it. The name of the app is Color Strokes and it basically allows you to do some light photo editing and make some really cool effects with your photos. You don't have to get super technical with like Photoshop or do any of that. It's really easy to use. Here's the system requirements 10.6 or later and I'm running this right now on my 2008 MacBook with Snow Leopard and it's doing pretty well. Here are the user ratings out of almost 600, about two thirds of them are giving it a five star rating and then a few other trickle into the other categories but it's doing pretty well in the Mac store. Here's the photo I'm going to be working with, just some fruit, nice and colorful. Let's quit that and I will launch the app by dragging my picture on top of the app icon. And it launches almost instantly and here we go. So in the top bar you can see we have import, load, and save options for our photos. We also can share our photos straight to Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, or email. And you can change the resolution of your saved photo. If it's too large to fit in your email you can make it smaller so it'll look great. The print canvas button is a little option offered through their website and it'll cost you a little bit more but you'll have a nice great looking photo afterwards. You have undo and redo buttons. You can zoom in, zoom out on your photo. Also if you do a two finger stroke down it'll zoom you out and a two finger stroke up will zoom you in. We can fit the photo to your screen. You can view it actual size and we can work in full screen mode. I'll click this right now and there we go. Now we're in full screen mode. So let's start from the top. The whole right hand side is our menu bar or our toolbar and everything works under what it's pasted under. So under paint, I'm in the native color tab. I can work in the grayscale tab. I can work in the recolor tab or I can work in the pan tab. So what I meant by everything works under what it's pasted below. If I'm in paint and I click native color, that means my paintbrush is going to be working in native color or my softness, my opacity, etc, etc. If I click grayscale, my paintbrush is going to paint in black and white. If I click native color, whatever I paint, it's going to return it to its native color or its original color before the photo was black and white. So now I'm in that native color and you can see I'm going to draw over all of these guys and I'm going to give them their color back and maybe I went outside the lines. I don't want these bananas to be color, so I'm going to click grayscale. Now I'm drawing in the grayscale again. Now those bananas are black and white. And so there we go. So pretty cool, really easy to use. I can change the diameter of my brush right here. I can change the softness. I can change opacity. I already went over those. Under grayscale, uh, let me make sure everything's gray again, just real quick. So under grayscale, I can change the photo to have a sepia kind of tone or a blue tone. Um, additionally, if you don't like the blue tone, you can change it with the hue. Nope, you can't change it with the hue. Come up here to recolor and you can choose any color you want. Let's say I want red. And so now I'm going to cover my photo with a, a little bit of a red film like this. And that's the recolor option. So. This is useful if you want to touch up a color, maybe you want all the reds to stand out. So what I'm going to do is go to undo and I'm going to come to background and I'm going to make the color come back. And now I'm going to go back to color and maybe I want the red of this watermelon to stand out. So I'm going to take my brush and make it a little smaller and now I'm going to draw my red recolor with my light red over the watermelon and now my watermelon looks just a little bit darker a little bit fuller in color a little bit more saturated but I did it without compromising the rest of the photo so if we go to compare we can see our old watermelon versus our new watermelon. So that is pretty cool. You can go through and individually touch up every single color if you would like to. Um, some of the other things we can do, let's make it black and white again. And let's get rid of that color masking that I just did. Let's make 
the watermelon stand out and we'll have everything else be washed out. So now it's in black and white and I'm just giving the watermelon back its original color that it started with and I'm under the native color tab or the original color with my paintbrush and I'm going to make my paintbrush smaller and there we go. So there the watermelon has its original color. Now maybe I want everything to stay black and white so I can compare it. Now the watermelon's standing out by itself. So that's pretty cool. Or maybe I want everything else to look kind of just washed out except for the watermelon. So I'm going to take my, in the background tab, take my amount. And this is going to change the grayscale. And I can bring everything back to full color just like the watermelon. Or I can make everything look really washed out except for that watermelon. So they have a little bit of color, but not too much. Now I can compare and you can really see the watermelon pops out in here, but the rest of the fruits still have some color, so that's cool. The last thing we can do is with this blur button, we're gonna add blur. So what we wanna do is return everything to its normal color. Photos look completely the same. So that is there. What we're gonna do is we're going to blur everything but the watermelon. So if you remember under our native color tab, we colored in the watermelon. So now in our background color, we're going to drag this blur out. We're just going to blur everything except for that watermelon. And that looks pretty good. So let's compare that. There we go. So here's our original photo. Here's our other photo. And you can see the watermelon really pops in that photo because everything else has been blurred out. So some pretty cool features, really easy to use. You saw I did all that in probably about two minutes and I put three or four or five different effects on this one photo. So now I want to show you a couple photos that I spent some real serious time on. Um, all these photos I spent probably less than three minutes on but they look really good and they're really well done and it was all done through this really cool program that I like a lot called Color Strokes and it's on the App Store for $2.99 right now. I believe normal price is $4.99, but it was on sale when I got it. So check this app out. It's really easy to use. And here's some of the photos that I worked on. All right, so here's the first photo I worked on. It's this little boy playing soccer. And what I basically did was just highlight him and make everyone else black and white so he really stands out. You can see him kicking the ball and all attention is pretty much on this guy. So here we go into our second photo of this kid. And what I did with this one was I wanted to make sure everyone still had color, but I still wanted the focus to be on the child kicking the ball. So I made everyone else blurry using that background blur effect. And I basically colored the little boy so he would not be blurry and he was in the foreground. So pretty good looking photo. Our last photo that we're gonna look at is this puppy. And I basically just wanted to do some color correction using the recolor option in the program. And I just made the sky a little bluer and the grass a little greener and I upped the contrast on the puppy and it looks really great. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and we'll see you next time.